ladies and gentlemen, this is Engaging Conversations. I am the oblivious one, Ardoff. Joining me today is Dark Jack and Zaltu, who has Hi. something he is actually quite eager to talk about today. Zaltu, what was the topic you were so fascinated with? I was is- playing video games, as uh, as I do, and um, I actually started a brand new game today. Not actually today, that's a lie, yesterday. Um, which is Mario I mean, plus Rabbids Kingdom out, Battle. So. Yeah, well, to, uh, look, okay? <laughs> call it call it artistic freedom. Okay. But it was uh, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, which is the first game that I bought for my Switch, which has just been like sitting on my counter uh, gathering dust, which it's still doing because I've only played it once. But... Um, I was looking at the reason why I bought the Switch in the first place, because I didn't buy any games for it at first, and it was just sitting there, because the Nintendo, the Nintendo decided not to bundle it with anything. Fuck them, by the way, for that. Like, even Wii Sports, at least, was something. Like, my grandma, at the age of, like, 86 or something, played Wii Bowling with me when I got my Wii. Wii Sports is, like, the, my fucking jam, dude. Dude, the the fencing mini game in that thing is the most broken. There's piece a fencing mini game. Yeah, man. Oh, that might that I, might have been resorts. That I might have been resorts. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that actually it sounds familiar now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the most broken piece of shit because anyway, like the Wiimote con- wasn't super precise. Consoles. So if you shook your Wiimote really, really fast, like you were like vibrating your hand, you would just clip through the enemy's guard and whack them. Oh, for a second there, you cut out for me. Okay, well, I heard not it. for anyone else, so deal with it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so as regards to the Switch, though, I look back on all the other consoles that I've bought, and they've all had somewhat like decent reasons to buy the console, um, or receive it for free, as the case may be in some cases, with a lot of case. Yeah. Um, but if I look... So I own eight consoles, right? I own a Wii, a GameCube, a Wii U, a Switch, a... Uh, 360, a PS4, a 3DS, and a PS Vita, along, of course, with PCs. Um, I mean, I, I've spent a lot of money on this hobby. Um, and the thing is, Life like, I, fair enough, I got my Wii as my first console. And I got the Wii because I wanted to play Smash Bros. Brawl on it. Which, legit I mean, reason. you know, legit reason. Some people don't like it. Fuck those people. Um, and then I got the Wii U. And I got the Wii U to play Smash Bros. 4 on it. <laughs> Surprisingly enough. Still mildly um, legit. Still pretty legit. Then uh, I got my 360 from a friend who was giving it, who gave it away to me because it made too much noise in his opinion. Um, so I mean that's just that's just a win. I got my GameCube when a Blockbuster shut down near uh, around my uh, my parents' place, and they were selling it for like twenty bucks. I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. I don't have any games or any what? controllers for it, but I've got it. Um, then I got the PS4 because well, I don't know. You're not saying anything. Oh. I got my PS4 because I wanted to play Persona Five, and then you know I bought a ton of other games for it, but initially to for Persona Five. And then I bought, let's see, so I bought my 3DS because I want, which was, shit, I'm trying to remember which game it was, it was, was it, was it, I think it was Persona Q initially that I wanted to play on the 3DS, and I got the PS Vita in order to play uh, Persona 3 Portable, um, which I actually never finished. And then I got my Switch for no reason. Yeah. Didn't, like, I feel like the Switch would have been... Well, people still bought the Switch. Regardless of whether or not there was a game on it, people were going to buy it because it had Nintendo on it. Well, yeah, of course. May of course. I interject? Of course. Yeah. I had no idea the Switch was out until games were being advertised for it. I mean, that's not that's surprising, good to thing. be honest. But, like, on the other side of that, like, every console recently has had the same quote-unquote problem of no games on release, and, like, that's not surprising. The PS4 is considered probably, at least from my point of view, is probably the most successful console of this generation. 
And I remember when it first came out, people were like, oh, no games on the PS4, ho, 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 ho. I was like, yeah, of course not. It just came out. Where the fuck are the games supposed to be coming from? If, uh, I feel like the the Switch would have been marketably more successful if they had released all the games that are currently out for it on release day. But, of course, that wasn't going to happen, but... I mean, like, what ex- what other games, what other big-name games have they put out? Well, like it was... I mean, Breath of the Wild came out with it, which they made a horrible decision by re- releasing it on the Wii U as well. Cause I, I, don't, I, would, people... I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that, considering that the Wii U sold like shit, so barely anyone had it. Yeah, true. Uh, of course, now they have Splatoon 2, they have... Oh, shit. I was just like thinking through the entire list of games that are currently you got on. Got arms. Yeah, they got arms now. They got uh, snipper clips. They got Mario plus Rabbids. Um, Fire Fire Emblem Warriors is coming out in October, I think. Same with Super Mario Odyssey. Um, but there weren't a whole lot of like big name titles being released with it when it came out, other than Breath of the Wild. I mean, it's the same thing with like... the PS4, though. Like up until very late into the PS, well, I mean late, up until easily a year into the PS4's lifespan, the only thing that it was on it that people liked was Bloodborne. But the main thing, like if you think about it, if a different company released a console, like not like Microsoft, not Sony, not Nintendo, if let's say Sega was still around making consoles, let's. Just pretend they pretend, are make believe, and they had did they did the exact same thing the Switch did, which was release the console with very little games. They've done that before. It's why they don't make consoles anymore. <laughs> I mean, actually, uh, it's because their hardware sucks. But you know, oh, yeah. Um, that being said, though, it's funny that you bring up a, th- a th- well third party a new uh, console manufacturer coming into the equation because Atari from uh, the great Atari 2600 days uh, announced or teased, should I say, the Atari box uh, just a few days after E3, which is supposedly uh, a brand new console that Atari is going to put out. A bra- it's not like a classic console like what Nintendo's right. been doing no, with it's the not like the, NES. Uh, the it's not like the um, the classic uh, NES Classic Collection. And Atari's already done like an Atari Classic Collection many, many times uh, in the past. I think there's like 14 different versions of them or something. But this is supposedly a brand new uh, full-powered console. Now, what that means is left a bit to, uh, to the imagination because there's no real information on yeah, it yet. For some reason. Um, Sounds like a so- day late and a fucking dollar short. <laughs> I mean, especially considering that they didn't announce a bit anything. You keep cutting out for me. Well, maybe you need to get better internet, dude. Like, especially wow. considering that they didn't announce like anything else. I can, I can, I believe their website is just ataribox.com. Um, let me check that real quick. Hmm. Uh, and they show yeah. a little teaser, like, yeah, it is. Uh, ataribox.com they show a little uh, teaser trailer of the uh, supposed Atari box along with a few uh, few like pictures of what it could look like it's even got like the 70s wood grain on its front it's uh, it's pretty amazing what what did Atari make they they made Galaga right they made a lot of things. Um, yes, I, I, I obviously I know of the company, but I'm not too familiar with the exact titles they have made. Have you heard of this game called Pong? Oh, okay. Now you have made me familiar. Asteroids. <laughs> As well, yep. Did uh, they make asteroids? Pitfall. Pitfall. Uh, huh. Cops and robbers. Huh. Uh, all of the all of the class Atari was the first company to produce a uh, commercially available uh, video game console. That was back in 1977, according to these notes. Fucking writing notes and shit. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm prepared. Cool. Uh, I'm not. I am going to ask a question to the veritable professionals we have here. In Do regard it. to the fact that games aren't coming out with the console releases, now, would 
like the hardware that the consoles are pushing be making it difficult for third party companies to create uh, products for them like like with the motion controls came out like was was it causing trouble would that be possibly like motion controls and virtual reality i thought i heard i thought i heard something about um the nintendo switch just now like releasing third party tools to make games for companies but nintendo has always been a bit particular in how it handles third parties it's a lot of the reason why there aren't many large third party distributors or third party developers for uh, nintendo um but the practice of like in and of itself making it harder for developers to uh, to develop on them isn't a like particularly real thing in nope. terms of like technology some companies can make it harder logistically for uh, for developers to develop on their platforms but it's not really a question of technology other than, you know, if, if we're coming out with motion controls, you've got an idea for a motion control game or you don't have an idea for a motion control game. That's that's a bit of a different question, though. Well, that was my curiosity right there. All right. Because, I, I mean... It's, it, this, it is... Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, bringing this back to, like, the uh, older consoles, uh, and we did say something about the... Uh, NES Classic and SNES Classic, which I think is coming out soon-ish, right? I I the believe suit. they're sold out everywhere if they haven't already come out. Yeah, but that that's what I wanted to talk about. Fucking Nintendo releasing this the NES Classic that had all those fucking games on it for like a nice little bundle of like sixty bucks, and then they just didn't make any more. Like I mean, it's as a soon as they released edition. it. It's a collector's edition, for sure. I mean, like, all those games are things that a Raspberry Pi could emulate no problem. So <laughs> anyone that wants Pi. to play these games can do so absolutely no problem. It's more a question of having, like, the collector's item there. Oh, true. I was hoping to get my hands on a NES Classic, but I don't have money. So. From what I heard, though, um, they're releasing a, a like a special version of Star Fox Two in one of them that like apparently had cut content or something. I'm not too huh. too familiar with the story, um, but that does sound interesting. Of course, as soon as it comes out, if it isn't already out, someone's gonna hack that shit and get it up online, so it doesn't really matter. True. Never <laughs> never really been a fan of pirating myself, but you know, other than when it's like TV, you <laughs> yeah, know, my morals too. have to stop somewhere. I think I think we shouldn't be discussing our illegal activities somewhere where we put it online on the internet. I no, absolutely okay. abhor okay. all theft in any form. Yes, here and engaging conversations, we do not um, uh, condone. We, we we do not condone thievery. In any here form. Engaging conversations, incorporated. We do not. <laughs> limited. Uh, I think we're limited and not incorporated. Oh uh, yeah. I I'm I not even certain part. what those terms mean. I, Me neither. To be honest, I don't give a fuck, oh. and I'm making it up. <laughs> Fabulous. Let's go with this guy. I, but I sound, I you sound get a like raise. I know what I'm talking about. Right. Yeah, you get a raise. Exactly. The money we don't make. <laughs> Excellent. Wait, I mean, I, but, but aren't I, I the money. boss? Your, 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 your money has officially doubled from zero Excellent. to zero. Ha! I'll be able to quit my day job. <laughs> Never That's the quit plan. My day job. <laughs> if I um, do, everyone will starve and die. Well, that just brought it all the way down. <laughs> Speaking of death, <laughs> <laughs> dead um, consoles. Yeah, exactly what I was gonna say. Actually, fabulous. Um, people, people are already talking about how uh, the Switch is killing the 3DS, right? Like, oh, the 3DS is gone, it's going to be dead in a year because all the titles are going to be on Switch. Um, and, of course, they're also saying that the Switch is going to be dead because it's not as powerful as the PS4 or the Xbox One, which are already getting new iterations. And people are saying that the Why PS4 though? and Xbox One are dead because, I mean, I don't, I don't follow that very well. But um, I think the real question is... Um, why it is that consoles now have such a different 
uh, like people have such a different perception of consoles now than they did back in the quote unquote golden age of consoles uh, in the 90s. Hmm, well, let's see. I would have to draw parallels between um, just the that. general technology attitude people have towards things, uh, just how quickly everything becomes obsolete nowadays, like the cell phones and all that crap. That's true. They, I, they're, they're making them with planned obsolescence, and I don't know. Maybe fucking console developers are trying to follow that trend of just making a new one every fucking year. Well, what's it? the main? Go, go ahead, go ahead, Jack. The well, there is definitely like the the limitations in technology, and also they can't really be throwing all the best stuff in a console because then selling it would be up into the thousands of dollars instead so of like it's the five hundred you would usually drop on a console nowadays. It's interesting that you say one. that. It's interesting that you say that because um, I know I'm very interesting. It, it, it's a very engaging point that you bring up here. Um, we can make a conversation out of that. We should start we a can. podcast. Yes, we can. I will make a conversation out of it if you fucking shut up for a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, it's interesting that you bring up that both of you bring up the uh, like the technological aspect of it um, because back in the '90s when Nintendo put out the Nintendo 64, which was in 1996 uh, for both uh, U.S. and Japan releases. I believe Europe was a year later. I may be wrong on that. Um, Australia would have been way behind. Probably. But the Nintendo 64 was the first uh, home electronic system to come with a 64-bit processor architecture, something that home computers didn't have as a standardized option until Microsoft put out Windows 7 in 2009. Over 10 years later, yep, 13 years later, from 1996 to 2009. Uh, And the PS2, which came out in 2000, again, in North America and Japan, also had a 64-bit architecture on the Emotion Engine. That happened 10 years before home computers had a generalized like general for as when i say like home computers i really mean like people have them as their defaults like you don't go out right nowadays and buy a computer and it's 32 bit that just doesn't happen anymore again right. windows oh, xp okay. had a 64 bit version but it was a lot more expensive you needed the right hardware for it no one bought it you know it was an enterprise thing and they've had like oh, right. big room size computers you know in the 70s that were 64 bit um the technology has existed before but i'm talking about something that was commercially available for the home market. And if you look at the prices, the Nintendo 64 was released for what I believe around $190 US, um, which counting for inflation comes out to 300 US nowadays, or 312 to be exact. That's the number that I remember. Whereas the Nintendo Switch current retail uh, suggested retail price is actually 299 so exactly 300 so what is it that make makes it so that back in the 90s they could release technology over 10 years in advance of home computers for the same relative price to a to a, a personal computer Versus nowadays, when it feels like sometimes the technology is lacking, like lagging behind a bit relative to um, standard PC uh, PC expectations or just general technological uh, improvements. It now this is just me speaking out of my ass, but it could be just the fact of turning a profit. You can't really be releasing stuff better than what home computers can release nowadays and still be making a profit. But I mean, surely, surely they were they doing could, that then. It, 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 yeah, but it could be the fact a bigger profit. I mean, you gotta make money somehow, and even if it's a bit scummy, you're using prices from like in the '90s today, just because they've been like the standard price you would sell a console for is around that much money, and you could just not use some hardware or like use like older hardware or just not that great hardware because it's cheaper to come by and it just makes producing a product 
a thousand times easier. All right, well, a thousand times easier, cheaper, and you still make the same. You still make a profit. Yeah, you still make the same profit. I, I feel like it's a scummy move to uh, to accuse all console uh, console producers of. Uh, that's why I said prices. I'm speaking out of my ass. That, yeah, that's yeah. why. That's why I'm saying I'm speaking out of my ass. I mean, let, I let's let's all be honest. What's going on? Let's all be honest. I think we can all agree that we wouldn't be surprised if that were the case. Um, but I I don't think that's something that I necessarily want to assume. Just uh, just out at of the, principle. I think at the end of the at the end of the day, Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo, mm -hmm. all three big console markets, there ha are companies. They got to make money. Otherwise, they can't make consoles. Absolutely. Um, quick note from Astrak that doesn't know anything. I would have to say in the past, like, they had to make something that would last, wouldn't they? Because, like, the video games back then weren't known, and they weren't nearly as popular, so when one console sold, it needed to work for a while in order to build up the cred whereas nowadays you say the word nintendo and someone wants to go play their game so they haven't necessarily needed to push the cutting edge of the actual hardware in order to sell quite as many units does anyone follow what i'm trying to say there I, yeah I, I do see what you're saying Kinda? but um if you actually look at the release dates of uh, the consoles um themselves if starting from the nes which was released in north america in 1985 then the snes was released in 1991 or six years later then the n64 was released in 96 which is only five years later then the gamecube I mean, was released i believe in 2000 or 2000 or 2001 not which another four or five years consoles. later and then the wii in 2007 the wii u in 2011 i want to say not to mention, they also released a wide variety of handheld consoles. Well, like I think had... the handhelds are a bit of a different market because they're not targeting quite the same thing. But the point I'm right trying to make is business... more. The point I'm trying business... to make is more yeah. that the the release date between the consoles hasn't varied all that much. I don't know if we can say that um, the consoles had had to prove themselves more in the past versus today. Obviously, people are more prone to buying consoles today. It's a, it's a bigger market. Gaming in general is a bigger market nowadays. Um, it's a lot easier but the than lifetime, buying a computer and playing it on there. As, uh, exactly. But the lifetime of the console um, doesn't seem to have significantly changed over the years. Hmm. I Personally, I feel like they've been coming out fucking lickety-split recently, but I suppose that might just be my perception. I think maybe part of part of that conception is because we've got three companies all putting them out um, like slightly offset to each other, so it feel especially with the Xbox One S S X X X X One. No, it's X now. It's there's X. An, also an, there's the Xbox One X, the Xbox One S, and the Xbox One, and the PS4 and the PS4 Pro. It's like you've got five right just there. You've got five different quote unquote consoles. I'm so um, glad so it's, it's, a PC But they're all technically <laughs> using the same. But they're all like they're all more or less uh, the same technology level, the same generation, right? It's the same thing. If you look at back in the '90s, it was actually probably worse, and even in the the '80s, um, it was terrible because uh, the the way uh, hardware was copywritten back in the time was a little bit different. So you had all these retailers even that started producing. Uh, console ripoffs of the atari 2600 under the name uh, like under their own names that could play cartridges meant for the, the atari 2600 and you had dozens and dozens of different versions of these these knockoffs right uh which all essentially played the same thing and even once that kind of changed a bit and the market you know after the market crashed in 83 um and nintendo came back with with uh, sega and uh and atari kind of tried to push back again uh, in the in the early early 90s, late 80s, you had the Genesis, you had the NES, the SNES, the Dreamcast, um, you had the Jaguar, you had a few other ones. I mean, you had a lot of different variations. You had the Philips CDI too. I mean, God knows no one remembers that shit for good reason. Um, I have no idea. What but that you had is. a the wait, what the CDI? You don't know the Philips CDI? No, the haven't most ever... poorly designed console ever conceived. <laughs> haven't haven't you ever heard of uh, 
Gee, it sure is boring around here. Oh, I have god. not, but now I want to. Oh so my god, you don't know the me. Zelda CDI games, dude? No. The Wonder rip off Mario Mario games. <laughs> were there the were there rip off Mario games? Oh, there was like one in like half production I've heard of. It was oh, man. just awful. I I I was not aware of the Mario ones. I know the the, the three Zelda games that were um that were released on uh on like, the CDI I f- because I so feel like the Mario game was made like RCA or something, like old remote company. Like Radio Shack, maybe. Radio Shack put out a con no, Radio Shack put out a version of the um the Atari twenty six hundred. I do not think they put out a, a console in the nineties though. I may be wrong about that. I, I I'm the point being that there are a ton of different consoles that were coming out back then, actually far more than there are now, right? I think especially yeah. in the early 2000s, right after the turn of the millennia, there seemed to be a bit of a drop um, where it really was just uh, Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. Uh, and they were mm-hmm. only putting one out every four or five years. And there weren't any like upgrades. or I mean, there were upgrades, right? There's the PS3 and the PS3 Slim and the Xbox 360 had a few different uh, iterations. And even the PS2 had a, had a PS, I'm pretty sure it had a PS2 Slim version. Um you're you're right, ruining we're it. We're recording. Boss. Jesus, dude. Okay, you're not hey. re- we're not recording you though. You you have no audio. <laughs> it's true. We're just talking to thin air. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um Ladies sorry about that. Our, our boss excuse. interrupted us. Yeah. Our boss interrupted us. Um He's gone now though. We we scared him off. Jeez. I, I, I also scared off my train of thought, however. Uh, what was yeah. I saying? Uh, there was... Uh, uh, shit, god damn it. Yeah, so, right, right. So there were multiple okay. different versions yeah. of the, the PS3. Like, PS2, I believe, had a, a slim version as well. Yeah, like, the I GameCube the didn't, version. the Wii didn't, as far as I know. I mean, it had the white and black versions, but... Uh, uh, and I guess they had the... the what was, it? was it the Wii Mini? Wasn't there? Wasn't uh, that a thing? Like one of those like, small red ones that played like just the Nintendo Selects? I don't know. I I know they have like multiple multicolored consoles for the Wii, but I don't. I'm I didn't fairly know certain that's it. Um, but uh, regardless, like, I think also part of it is that they make more of a show of it nowadays because conventions like E3 are a lot more popular than they were. Um, and just again, the gaming industry in general has exploded in the past there, you know, there is five also, years. There is also the fact that what else did Atari and Sega make? And, and for that matter, what else did Nintendo make? It was that Sony makes a lot of things, not just consoles. Oh, not no. just so, games. Sony, like Sony. Sony Entertainment LTD is a huge company that goes way beyond uh, video games. Like they make toilets. Same thing with Microsoft. You know? What, like, they make everything. They make ev- the operating system everyone uses. And if you don't, you use Mac, and that's a different story. I mean, but you're or, also or, or Linux or Unix or FreeBSD well, or Solaris or you know. But those are. Well, <laughs> but no up. one uses I'm those. I'm making a point here. <laughs> Fine. But it, like Microsoft doesn't even need to make consoles. Technically, they have had the PC gaming market down for ever. Like, what do you play? They, they don't. What though. do you use? It's- what do you? What operating system do you use to play games? Well, while it is true that um, they have a, an indirect monopoly on PC gaming, um, Microsoft, other than owning DirectX, doesn't have any kind of grasp on the PC gaming market since Steam holds most of that, uh, uh, most of those shares. Even recently, um, with the like the, their Xbox One Play Everywhere program, where you could buy. Uh, a game on Xbox One, you would have it on the Windows Store. No one uses that because no one oh, uses the Windows Store to buy to buy games, right? Yeah. Um, and me, as far me. as as far as turning a profit goes, I don't actually know if this is true, but I have heard that the Xbox 360, which was by far Microsoft's most um, publicly uh, uh, successful project, uh, publicly did not owned? turn a profit. I mean, it's a shit console. Shit on me there for a second. 
it, it may it may be a shit console from uh, some points of view, but it it was definitely the console that most people, at least that I know, most people uh, had a 360 over a PS3, especially at the beginning of its lifespan. At the end, it was a bit more uh, half and half. Um. Yeah, I suppose. I may have prejudices. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you're 15, had acne, and wanted to play some Call of Duty, you got an Xbox. That was nah, dude, just kind of. Play... I never was like that. Didn't you play uh, Call of Duty Black Ops on the Wii? No. I I played I played um, World at War on the Wii because before I had an Xbox, I had a Wii. Like my my consoles were from beginning to end. I had an, a Super NES and a fat PS2 when I was very very young. And both of those crapped out on us eventually. But I did get a PS2 when I was younger. Oh, the slim one. I still have it to this day. It's in my closet right now. And then we got a Wii, and then we had an Xbox. But because I wasn't really a huge Nintendo fanboy, I was always on the PC most of the time anyway. But uh, the, the main, what I was trying to get a point across before is like Sony and Microsoft made thousands of other things and were already trusted brands to begin with it was kind of a no brainer that when they released consoles it was kind of going to stick but when you know like when, it was kind of surprised that Nintendo made it through the fact that you know like Atari and Sega like drowned in their console well you know, console the reason they... part of the reason for that um, is that as I said, the, the video game market crashed in uh, 1983 where profits in the gaming industry dropped by 95% um, in, I, in one year. They dropped 95%. And so that happened in, 90, uh, in 1983, and then the NES was uh, reve- released in North America in 1985, uh, which was two years after. And the NES was a big big huge step up from the 2600 right um a game like mario would be absolutely unthinkable to play that on uh, one of atari's early consoles and then the earliest competition they had was uh the sega genesis which came out four years later so for three well three you know four years grand total Nintendo was the only console on the market that anyone cared about. And that built up a huge, huge fan base, right? And then yeah, two yeah. years after the two years after the Genesis came out, the Super Nintendo came out with a bunch of other new titles and a ben- whole bunch of new technology, right? Um, and again, uh, it grabbed the attention of a lot of people because it was the newest, brightest thing in the market. Then... The, the Sega Saturn came out, the Dream, not the Dreamcast right away, but the Saturn came out um, in 95, uh, the Jaguar came out in 93, I forget when the Philips came out, but no one cares about that, the PlayStation 1 came out in 95, and then the Nintendo 64 came out in 96, and again, the Nintendo 64 was a huge step up into... Um, you know, 3D worlds. Games like Ocarina of Time and Super Mario 64 were completely groundbreakingly new at the time. Um, and it's not something that any console offered. And it's kind of funny to look at it that way because you look at what's what the image is in modern times when Nintendo has this habit of releasing consoles in between generations to some extent. Um, and they always seem underpowered relative to uh, the, other, the other big two, right? Whereas right. at the time they were releasing those consoles in quote-unquote in between generations and they were the next step up. They were the new technology, the new features, new 3D, new uh, 16-bit versus 8-bit and you know obviously in the 64-bit engine for the uh, the Nintendo 64 um, and all that. And then when it came time uh, for the competition between the PS2, the GameCube and the original Xbox Personally, I feel like those lines started to blur. Um, from what I know, Nintendo kind of kind of screwed themselves on third-party support for the GameCube. But the GameCube is still a really l- beloved console. It's got a lot of classics on it, a lot of good games. There are very few bad games that I know of on the GameCube. And, I mean, obviously you're only going to remember the good ones, right? But um, right. F- from, from the image of the people I talk to, what they tell me, uh, is that the GameCube was really liked. And then 
you get the Wii, you get the Wii U, and you get the Switch, and the current generation um, after the GameCube seems to have uh, gone downhill uh, when compared to, uh, and, and again, I'm talking about like public image, uh, compared to the power of the PS3 and the 360, uh, and then the PS4 and the Xbox One. Yeah. Then again, it always sure. has seemed like Nintendo has said, fuck off to the other two main competitors, Sony and Microsoft, and just kind of done whatever they wanted to do, so to speak, while still trying to keep in line with the whole fact that if they don't release a console, they're going to start losing, you know, people buying consoles. Yeah. Well, they, so I definitely they think kind of started ahead. out with big balls. I actually, I actually know a little bit of history on this one. And uh, how you mentioned uh, the release orders and everything. Um, I actually know the history on how Nintendo saved gaming with its marketing. And since that's kind of what we're talking about, I figured I'd yeah, yeah, I'd good. retell that. Um, basically, what happened back when the Atari was still hot was it released a series of bad games, starting with the fabled E.T. for the Atari. Uh, yes. Pretty much started that, and then the market crashed because it was so crap, and just because uh, no, no, nothing was selling for that, so it went down for a while. But when Nintendo came back and they marketed their new system, they didn't market it as a gaming console, but as an entertainment system, which you know tricked the simple-minded people essentially into buying the new consoles. And pretty much saved gaming in, at least in this country as we know it, because they changed their marketing to not associate themselves with what was known as gaming consoles back then. That's that's definitely a good point. Um, I I also know that uh, the Nintendo Nintendo implemented the Nintendo Seal of Approval system uh, that you'll find on any game released on uh, on a Nintendo system. Um, that uh, certifies that the game is has a certain level of quality and polish uh, to it, which was not the case uh, beforehand. It's uh, it's interesting to note that there is actually one console that, or quote unquote console that um, was developed before the crash that made it through the crash and came out doing relatively well for itself, uh, which is the Commodore sixty four. Um, <laughs> Which, I mean, it wasn't quite the same as the other consoles. It's, I, I personally, I have a difficult time calling it, like, quite a game console. Um, it's very unique in how it approaches its games. They're not, you know, adventure games. You're not going to find something like, uh, like Pong or, like, Space Quest or whatever on it. Um, but... Uh, it's it's surprising that it actually managed to to pull through, and I think that's mostly because a lot of it was uh, a lot of its content was made by the by a community more than by a retailer. Um, though I do not I'm not fully uh, fully immersed in the Commodore's history, other I than knowing that it's of it. other than knowing that the Com the 64 and Commodore 64 comes from it having 64 uh, kilobytes of RAM, not that it has a 64 bit system. Hmm. Never heard of it. I not have surprising. various reviews. Yeah, it's always it's not around anymore. No one really no. cares about it. But God, you know, no. I think it was a pixelated monstrosity, if I recall. It properly. was. It was. But then, then again, most games at the time were. So yes. So here's yeah. an, here's here's the continuation of this. How do you suppose they should be marketing their consoles in the future, knowing like what's worked in the past and and what the industry is headed towards? What should they be aiming to sell in the future? Well, for Sony and Microsoft, they're kind of probably going to keep going up in that uh, tug of war of who, which one of us has the better console. But I feel like with the what Nintendo's doing is. Well, while releasing more games on their console when it releases might help in the future, what the yeah. fact that they keep trying to like do new and new and better things with their console. Well, better is subjective, but you know, like with the Wii, they released motion controls that wasn't too popular at the time. 
or at least it, not before the Wii came out, but a lot of people used it. It was a good family console. Like you would play uh, some Wii Sports with your grandmother, right? Yeah. So yeah. it was always fun to do that. It's like one a video game party my grandmother's system. ever played. <laughs> of course, like then, like the uh, I'm trying to think of it, the Wii U came out. It wasn't too much different, but of course they did. They were releasing their their uh, handheld consoles before that. Like you know, they got. They had like the, uh, the the Game Boy, but then after that they had the DS. It was a dual screen system. Like that was pretty new, pretty out there. It's true. Like, it was the also fact that they... it was also one of like at the time there was I I think the did the PlayStation Portable come out before the DS? I have no idea. I don't, I don't think so. I think it came after. I think it came after. So the 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 DS had, a, had an advantage of being like the only thing on the market as well. So any kind of innovation they brought could only be considered innovation and not like, oh, I like the other way better, which is a lot of what I see nowadays. Yeah. Of course, especially, they especially coming when we're talking about like gimmicks and whatnot. It's like, oh, I don't like gyro controls when I aim because I'm used to a controller or I don't like using a controller because I'm used to a mouse. Um, but being like being the first one to do something new, uh, I think is, is was a big advantage for them as well. Yeah, of course they kept upgrading their DS until eventually came the 3DS, which we have the, the today. The new 3DS, excuse the me. The new 3DS, yeah, that's, that's what I meant to say. Of course, I am not a fan of the 3D on those things. It oh gives God, me a no! Fucking I, headache. Some of the some of the puzzles that are like specifically made to be done in 3D are really cool, but you cannot play a game. I mean, I cannot play a game with a 3D on in that thing. I can't. I can't. I've. I had the 3D. My brother has a 3DS, so I, I play on that sometimes. And I turned the 3D 3D function on a couple times, and every time, five seconds is enough to give me a migraine. So I just turn it off. But um, the thing, it, like, it was new. Like, of course, 3D in video games has like never been too far fetched a concept. But having it so that way you don't have to be wearing glasses for it is always yeah. nice. Uh, and then. Of course, their latest console, the Switch. Like, how many other consoles are hybrid consoles? How many of them can you just pick, I mean, pick the, up from the, the PS Vita, if you buy a PlayStation TV, you can connect some games to the big screen. Yeah, but with the, the, Switch, with the Switch, you just yeah, take, yeah, it, out of the, take it out of the anything, thing, start anytime. walking around, start saving I mean, personally, again. Yeah, personally, I, I almost never play games... Um, Outside of like when I'm sitting down in my uh, in my apartment and playing oh, yeah, games, I'm the, I'm the same way. Um, but yeah, when I'm taking a, nice a trip, TV, like when I'm yeah, on... there to play games on it. Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, like when I'm traveling and like I, I'm on planes fairly often, or I'm in a bus, you know, quite, also quite often. Like I'm not going to sit there and do nothing. I pull out my PS Vita, I play uh, play some games, pull out my uh, I, I I prefer. This is going to tr 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 trigger, tr uh, tr you know, trigger some people. But I prefer my PS Vita over the 3DS to an extent that I cannot even explain. Just because the 3DS's screen... Uh, so I don't have a new 3DS, or like a, a 3DS XL. I have a normal 3DS. And the screens of that thing are tiny. Like, even if there are two of them, the screens are tiny. Oh, dude, I... I on, on, the only actual handheld console I have is a DS Lite, so I, I absolutely know where you're coming from. My brother's yeah, one yeah, of yeah. those, the 3DS. Yeah, no, like it's the screens are tiny, and it's like yeah, I I get the idea, right? It's not like particularly that bad, but um, and I guess it's like it depends on the kinds of games you're playing too. But if I'm playing like a, a even somewhat story driven game, I want to be able to like see what i'm doing and see the characters and like not just actually have to read the look text. at anything actually read the text right so if i'm playing a game like one of the one of the one of the only games i finished um on my 3ds was yoshi's new island which is you know, a decent game it was a fun little platformer um but it was just that it was just a platformer like i would i'd get on the train to go to work back when i worked at the office and i would play a level and then by the time i was done the level i'll be at the end of my train line and that'll be it but i didn't have any I didn't have to keep any kind of like continuity in my head about anything. I was just like, okay, I've got a level. I don't have to like look at for anything really particularly close. It's just you know I play it, whatever. If I'm trying to play anything that requires, I mean, a lot of screen space, then I'm fucked. 
Yeah. Which is why the which is why Nintendo releasing a, an extra large screen might have done the 3ds a lot of a lot of good it, it's not great that you oh, yeah. have to buy a the, new console the, yeah it sucks but... that you have to buy like the new 3ds um like the, the new 3ds xl in order to get a larger screen but i'm honestly considering it because there are a lot of good games on the 3ds right just get um, the 2ds it's the same yeah, thing the just without the 3d yeah, and yeah, it, yeah. it's exactly it the same thing now is yeah, it actually like, cheaper the the th- the new 3ds xl is 200 bucks and the new td the new 2ds xl is 150 so it's a 50 no, buck difference okay. yeah yeah but if i don't use the 3d anyway. the main thing i like about the 2ds now is the fact that it's it it's the exact same console just without the 3d there's no like the fact that it's just a flat slate now which yeah I oh god that was stupid thought, what the hell is this thing i Isn't do this not supposed know be portable I do not know who designed the original 2DS, but I hope they are fired because that was the most <laughs> ugly, stupid design I've ever seen. I understand why, because it was a lot cheaper to produce, but still. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, come on. Like, it's two hinges. On. It's not that much cheaper to produce. You have to, like, have two screens. The, 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 the 2DS was designed to have one screen in it that just had, like, some software splitting the video. While yeah. the 3DS had to, it had to have two screens. Yeah, but that's just how that's how it that's how a dual screen system the DS works. Yeah, it's, two it's, a, it's a it's a two SS two single screen. Yeah, but uh, but to, yeah, to bring so like, to bring us back on topic um, about what do we think that console manufacturers should be pushing in the future should be marketing in the future uh, to, to put gamers. Games, well, ga- games, obviously, but um, you'd think obviously, but they're only pushing hardware. This, I mean, yeah, is, the teraflops are pretty good. <laughs> Six teraflops. That means my that dudes. means that means everything to the modern consumer. It just sounds it sounds impressive. Look at what all these it sounds do. impressive. Yeah, Except I don't even know what the fuck a teraflop is. What is a teraflop? It's a measure of how many operations you can perform in a second. Amazing. Can I just have my game now and play? <laughs> no. You must first take a class so that you can appreciate how the six teraflops plays into this. <laughs> Absolutely that's, horrible. I, I, I think that's why a lot of people have stuck with Nintendo up to this point. Like, instead of having the jack-off contest of how great your console is on both sides, they release a console that has a, you know, it has a gimmick. Like the Switch, it's a portable device as well. But Yeah, yeah. The main thing is, also, like, Nintendo, games. while really... Okay, yeah, also Nintendo. Games. While also the fact that they've pretty much been releasing almost the same game over and over again throughout the years. Well, they're, you, they're say, still good you games. say that. You say that, but really, if you look at like how many sequels any given series has, Mario has fewer platformer games than there are Assassin's Creed games. <laughs> that is actually true. Then I think oh, you, it, you learn every, you learn something new every day. Like it's it's true that like they milk their franchises a lot more like if you count like mario kart and smash bros but if you got the number of games that someone like mario has appeared in it's definitely a lot more um but they definitely have a lot of variations in the game so I, they have I a guess... lot of variations for sure and they've got a lot of different ips like for as much as people say like oh nintendo reuses their ips nintendo has a lot of different ips yeah they so got like they got mario party that has mario in it but it's essentially a completely different game yeah it's completely it different just game. has sure, mario characters it probably wouldn't it. sell as well if it didn't have mario um and then you of course you got your standard mario platformers but then you got like stuff like mario 64 was like it's a 3d mario game that's com- that's a sen- it's mario's in it but it doesn't have to have mario in it for it to be a game it could have replaced it with Hey, I'm Average Joe trying to save my accountant. That's well, I think that's a, that's a lot not. of the things of like most <laughs> trying to save his accountant. <laughs> yeah, I, what I, a thrilling gotta, tale! I, I know, but it's, it's, <laughs> I mean, I think that can be said for like most games, though. It's it, just in general. It's like, yeah, you make a sequel to a game. There's no reason that you can just completely erase, like, change all the characters, even from one Mario platformer to the next, and say like, oh, okay, these are different characters now. So whatever they've got now. Now his name is uh, Eoram. And Luigi is uh, Ij- Ijuil. Ijuil. Let's not get Ijuil. ahead of ourselves. Whatever. <laughs> we're, we're, we're starting to have aneurysms. You, you get the idea. <laughs> you get the idea. Yeah. It's like 
obviously Pokemon, any kind of game. sequel that's not like purely story based um doesn't really matter right you can put any like i personally have always had a problem with the zelda quote unquote timeline because of this it's like all the games can stand alone can stand on their own there's no like direct reference to um like one thing one game being a sequel to another obviously there are like some you know pointers to all oh, the this happened and all oh, hero of time this and oh i remember uh the the, the great evil from legend or whatever but yeah. it's not like you're playing Twilight Princess and it's like, oh yeah, remember when uh, uh, Link used his ocarina and uh, 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 there was Sheik? It's like no, none yeah. of that happens. Like you can take each of the games and you can you can play them completely separately. It's the same for most games, to be honest, right? Hell, you um, you could even take Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Like they're the same character that you're playing as. Yeah, and uh, but in the case of it's in the so case of, separated. Yeah, in the case yeah. of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, like it's known that they're direct sequels. Like Nintendo has confirmed this, and it's the same link. But you look at what like actual in game, and there's nothing important enough in the story to warrant have... to warrant yes. forcing it into a sequel. Right? You could have a completely different game. Yeah, you could play replace Link and Majora's Mask with 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 Lonk. Or someone completely different with with Ezio from Assassin's Creed, and be like, Long. oh yeah, here's a completely different game. And it's like, sure, okay, but there's this reference to Ocarina of Time. It's like, yeah, it's a reference. So what? It's an East. How many games have Easter eggs referencing other games? You know, how from many games understand. made by completely different companies reference the Legend of Zelda in some way? Yeah, it's you know? like it. Like, sure, there's the Ocarina, but like the entire gameplay premise is completely different. From what I understand, I haven't played ocarina of time but i'm all op- but like from what i understand like the ocarina doesn't play as nearly as pivotal a role in that game as it does in majora's mass where you literally have to play the song of time to go back to three days i mean you, so you have time you don't don't say anything because you, you don't really know i don't um, I, I, I wouldn't i wouldn't say know. i wouldn't say, personally i wouldn't say it's less it's on important my list. or more important um but it definitely plays a different role gameplay wise you know uh, i think there's like but again, it comes back to saying that, you know, you could take almost every game and just make it completely different. Obviously, there are exceptions to this. You take the Telltale games, um, for example, and it's like, oh yeah, well, I'm playing the, the first episode of The Walking Dead, and then I'm playing the second episode of The Walking Dead, and it's like, well, there's kind of a starting point that we're established on, right? And you want it a kind of continuation. The same thing with Mass Effect, um... There's a continuation to the story that revolves around what happened in the previous games. That's why so many people were pissed at the ending of the third one, because all of that continuity suddenly disappeared. Um, yeah. But the games where that's important are very few and far between, com- com- at least compared to you know games in general. Yeah. And I think I've, I've completely lost where we actually were starting this conversation. Back to the what we should be marketing towards. Back oh, yes. to what we should be marketing. We never actually answered the question. No, oh, I answered it there's myself. N- it's true. Have about games, games, I need right? to push have some games. fucking games. I, maybe it's just because I haven't taken any courses in business or anything like that. But or I don't think there's any... Shut up. <laughs> I don't think there's any definitive answer you can give that will be like, yeah, you do this, that will work. Like, you can't. Like, if you well, look no, no, at... Let's, let's change the question. Though. What what do you want them to uh, to market? What do you want them to have? <sighs> like, based on the current <sighs> market and the current like establishment, what would make you buy the next console that Microsoft puts out. Mm, that, that Microsoft not be puts out. I mean, that Microsoft that Mike's, anymore. <laughs> not having a confusing ass name. That's that's uh, a good point. That's asking too much. That may be asking too much. I'm ready for the X, the Xbox One XX. The, the, the Xbox XXX. Yeah. Well, that's the bone uh, X. Cause Xbox One X. I want. I want games, man. I mean, there's like... Nintendo's been putting out the most games I've ever wanted, and I've never actually owned a Nintendo past the N64. So, I mean... 
I mean, why I mean, not? A lot They're of that is fun games. A lot of that is on the developers of the game side for like a fun game, but as far as like technology goes, as far like as the at the state, it's yeah. Going, as far as the consoles, as the technology. I mean, we can for... we can bitch about games for a long time, no, but to, to keep it. <laughs> to to keep it just to the subject of conversation, okay, uh, to just uh, the game, just the consoles. I I don't know affordability. Like kind of do, definitely, that's a good one. For especially someone like me that kind of has to go with used. Yeah, I just don't have money for consoles. Stop. Like I, I want I want to get a Wii U so I can play Breath of the Wild and also a couple titles that are on the Wii U, but. I don't have the money. Stop forcing gimmicks and just make good console, like good standard consoles that play games, and so that the price doesn't necessarily need to be up so high because it has 3D RS 420K max six million six, yeah, six teraflops. teraflops of it can technically run in 4K. E, yeah. But it's not actual 4K. Stop cramming yeah, that into the price, and yeah, that's then I'd probably buy consoles again. So, so Ardoff, why you you saying that uh, you you were saying that um, Nintendo's put out the most games that you were interested in uh, recently, but you haven't owned a Nintendo console since the 64. Yeah. So what? Why haven't you bought a Nintendo console recently? Money. Never had enough bought... money, and we were a PlayStation family, so. Gotcha. If we got one, it was the PlayStation. But then I look and I see like Splatoon. I see. I really wanted to play Super Smash Brothers, like one of them at least. Like like I said, N sixty four is the last one I played. I'd like to have caught up on any of them. Oh, Smash Smash Four is great. If you can, and, you can get like, your hands on the Wii U. Uh, yeah, any of the Mario's. Hands. I'd like. To, I'd like to give a shot at Mario Galaxy, except for it's fucking archaic now. It's still so, really good. But, but, uh, I actually have that. I need to play it. You, how the fuck have you not played Mario Galaxy? It was I'm surrounded by original. scrubs. I know, right? I'm so terrible. My brother growing up, he was always Nintendo, and I was always... Well, I was PC, but if we're sticking with consoles, I was always Xbox. So, growing right, up, and I didn't even up. have an Xbox 360 till I was... Or, like, an Xbox console regardless <laughs> until I was, like, 16. So, I don't know, like... That would, that's the reason the main reason why I always suck with PC because it's the closest thing to like gaming on like the more AAA titles that I could get even though my computer could never run those titles because I was always on a shitty ass laptop but that's a different yeah. thing <laughs> you could play Minecraft I I could if I turned every single setting down uh, and I was also installed say, mods I've experienced lag in Minecraft <laughs> That is, Look, that is everyone's legit. computer sucks, but mine. Okay. My my laptop was a business laptop, had no graphics card, obviously, other than on board, and was an i3 processor. It was Jesus. never going to play anything good, but it was what I had. So you know, you yeah, make fair, enough. Hell, fair enough. I started my YouTube channel with that laptop. I mean, you could play like, you could play indie games like indie platformers, 2D indie platformers. I could probably play PNs. Undertale on my laptop. Uh, oh my god! Right. <laughs> let's let's not get into this conversation. We all know where it's headed. Um, right, so it does give me a good idea for uh, for uh, next time's hey! podcast because next we are time, encroaching upon talk... an hour. No, we, next we, time we're we not going to talk about Undertale. We have definitely been here for an hour now, so I think yeah, let's uh... closing arguments. How do we like who uh, who, who wants closing to go first? Console, I... console gaming provides a very great market like you don't have to build a pc you don't have to play a pc you just have to go to the store get an xbox set up a, an account and start playing but Ooh, for like, they could cut yeah. out that account shit too if i, if I they yeah, could I you, you don't that's, have that's to a... you just you don't even have to do that technically i mean and you need to make a profile but i mean that's yeah and then you start playing absolutely like that's what consoles offer to the table a great way to like just start playing video games that's... And for cheaper than a PC, because technically, if you're going for a good gaming PC, you're spending what seven hundred to a grand. Uh, it, talk about it, talk about two two grand, yeah. unless you get, unless you get all the accessories PC. already. Yeah, but for for consoles, like you're spending four hundred dollars, and you're plugging it into your TV that you probably already own, and then you're good. 
I have to agree pretty much 100% on that. Uh, just harken back to my, what I wish they would do is stop making the gimmicks and just make things we can plug in and play in our front room with friends and or family and whatnot. Yeah. It's, I mean, just, it's the way I would wish consoles should, could go. I, I can, I can definitely see that. Exist. I want to, I want to add, um, as well that, even though Microsoft has gotten a lot of shit with the Xbox One and like the whole Xbox One family, um, I think their current practice is probably the most consumer friendly out of all three, um, all, all of the big three, purely because they do not have any exclusives anymore. All their exclusives are on PC as well. And as a mm. consumer, that is amazing because it means that if I don't want to spend that money on a console, I don't have to. I don't know what it says about their business strategy, but as a consumer, I love it. Well, I mean, Microsoft owns computers for the most part. And well, they, Microsoft they own, the owns a lot of computers, system. but like, if, I can, if I've already got a PC and I can play it on PC, I'm, I can do that, right? right. And I don't need right. to buy a console. Whereas you go back to the 360 generation... It wasn't like that. If there was an exclusive on the 360, I was fucked. I needed to get a 360. Right, and, right, you know? right. And it's the same thing for like anything on PlayStation. If there's something on PlayStation I want that's only there, then I have How to buy a PlayStation. Are, like, Which again, all stars there. You both said the same something completely different at the same time. Yes, yes, we did. Uh, I referenced PlayStation All Stars. I just said <laughs> there there's still exclusives on there. Well, exactly. That aren't anywhere else. Um, and I mean, like again. No exclusives is probably a terrible business strategy, especially if only one of the big three does at the same time, as evidenced by Microsoft not having great sales on the Xbox One. Um, but again, as a consumer, that's great. Yeah, absolutely. Which causes us to get more money out, which keeps the industry. We should, going. yeah, we should, we should probably give Microsoft all our money, right, guys? All of it. Uh, like, yeah, I have. <laughs> where's my wallet? I'll just give them my credit card. They can rack up a bill. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so, thanks for tuning in. Salty, thank you. you have last words to say? Those were my last words. Just Fact. any random statement that I can end this off on. Uh, my immortal is really good.